Do you like this picture? Um, yes, of course I like it because it's um, it represents um, the way I feel about the English landscape. I like the uh, dark sky, the brooding sky, and the naked trees. And when it's cold and wintry, you feel the sharpness of winter, and the light is very bright, and I can see for miles. But I have to wait a long time for this to happen. Sometimes I wait two hours to get such a picture. Why is it a good picture? How do you explain? I think everything complements each other in the picture. The sky is very dramatic and the, the sadness of the trees and the emptiness of the hedgerows where in the spring the birds make their nests and reproduce. Um, it's what we call in English language melancholic. It has a, a somber, it has a slightly sad or threatening, you know, you could put a piece of classical music with this picture and they would go hand in glove. It would be like um, parallel. Probably a little Wagner. There's a little Wagner in the sky there, you know. I get a lot of criticism from people saying, why are your photographs so dark? And the reason is because um, I'm dark. I've seen lots of terrible atrocities in my life, murder, assassinations of uh, you know, people in the Middle East and Africa dying. And so there's a, you know, there's a great deal of sorrow and darkness in me. This is one of your most iconic mm -hmm. picture. Sadly, yeah. It shows a, a person who has suddenly disintegrated because his part in the great battle of Hue during the 1968 Tet Offensive in Vietnam. And this man, you know, he belongs to the US Marine Corps, which is considered to be, you know, the tough guy's regiment. And, uh, and he, he came to a point in his life where he couldn't take any more fighting and any more fear. And he had a complete mental breakdown of course, it's an anti-war statement, but... Um, why, why is it an anti-war statement, this picture? Because it shows the destruction of a human being, the destruction of his mind, his, his part in the destruction. I mean, he was part of the destruction, but all of a sudden it became... He was the one who was being destroyed. I was in the same battle for 14 days, and in the end I knew I was also becoming slightly mentally unbalanced. I was in an abnormal situation. I was behaving abnormal. I was sleeping next to dead bodies in the field at night and not knowing they were there. And I remember seeing a man one day who'd been killed and a tank had run him over. And so he was as flat as a Persian carpet. And I walked past and looked at him and I almost had conversations with him. So in a way, war is is as total madness as you could ever envisage. It's total madness. It's not normal. So why are you going there? Because I'm drawn to the, I'm drawn to the danger of it. I'm drawn to the challenge of making these images and bringing them back and probably shocking other people. But for some reason, I, I used to enjoy risking my life, really. It was like playing Russian roulette in a way. Do you remember this picture? So that was my baptism of war that first day in that Turkish village in Cyprus in 1964. This woman, she's like um, praying God. Many people I photograph, even men who are about to be executed, they look up. Um, it's as if you're looking at one of Caravaggio's great paintings or Michelangelo. People look up because they think God is there and he's going to help them out at the last minute. He's not. It takes me back like a flash to when I was that 13-year-old boy when um, uh, my father died. Hmm. If I didn't have this 
this feeling. I would never see my photography the way I see it. It comes with my own personal feeling. Mm -hmm. I, I can only interpret the way I feel when I see it. If I couldn't do that, my pictures would mean nothing to you when you look at them. I want them to hurt you as much as they hurt me. Mm. Otherwise, why am I there? What is the point of me being a voyeurism and just looking at other people's tragedies? Why? I have to make these pictures and bring them back and, and, and let you know the wrongs of what's going on in the world. And these things are stuck in my brain. They, they will never be allowed to escape my, my mind. And, you know, I've actually used the landscape to escape from that. But a lot of people say to me, you know something, your landscapes, there's no, no doubt about it, they look like war scenes. Thank <laughs> you.